In 1952, a man named George Van Dassel claimed that he received telepathic messages from more than 20 entities, or so-called extraterrestrials. While performing a so-called meditation session at Giant Rock in the Mojave Desert in California, a place that is coincidentally considered as a sacred place by the ancient Indians of the area. Among the entities that channeled messages to him, there was one who called himself Ashtar. Subsequently, he began to receive messages from the Ashtar command in the years to follow. In the same year, a Polish immigrant named George Adamski had a close encounter with one of these entities at the same place. Adamski and his friends made an expedition to the Mojave Desert when they are said to have seen a large submarine shaped object hovering in the sky. Believing that the ship was looking for him, Adamski is said to have left his friends and to have headed away from the main road. Shortly afterwards, according to Adamski's accounts, a scout ship made of a type of translucent metal landed close to him, and its pilot, a Venusian called Orthon, disembarked and sought him out. This events were the catalyst that started a wave of so-called channelings. Channeling is a method of contact with this so-called extraterrestrials. But to fully understand what channeling is, we have to define the three types of channeling. The first type of channeling is called full body channeling. And it occurs when the soul of the human individual leaves the body. And this unseen entity or supposed extraterrestrial literally takes over and possesses and incarnates the individual's body. This is very similar, if not identical, to what we commonly know as demonic possession in the New Age circles and UFO literature. This type of channelers are known as starseeds. The second type is called conscience channeling and it occurs when this unseen entities or so-called extraterrestrials join the body of the human person and this person has conscience of this joining and provides a vehicle for this entities to work through in new age terminology this is referred to as twin souls the third type it's called trance channeling and it occurs when a human individual enters a trance-like state so they are not conscious of this entity coming in and utilizing their body, speaking directly through it. George Van Tassel coined the term channeling to distinguish this form of communication from the one used by spirit mediums. But as we were able to see, this so-called channeling of extraterrestrials contact with the so-called spirits of the dead through sciences and other ways of spiritism and a demonic possession where a demonic entity takes over the body of the person who is being possessed are very similar if not the same in all of the cases we have this unknown entities who possess people take over their bodies give them messages and sometimes even write books through them could these be the same entities working here the Bible and the book of Judges tells us the following. And the book of Samuel tells us the following. As we just saw, the Bible talks about many Old Testament false deities, Ashtoreth being one among them, who were known as the host of heaven, fallen angels that deceived men and were being worshipped as gods, now it takes an entity who calls himself Ashtar, 
contacts, possesses, and channels messages to people, just as in the 50s, and claims to be commander of the Ashtar Command, whose commander-in-chief is an entity who calls himself Sananda, and claims to be Jesus, the Christ. He will claim those in the UFOs are our ascended masters, our forefathers, and creators, or even angelic beings his host of angels, since he is God, and it will be a worldwide spectacular event, also aired live on TV, as it happens. Imagine the panic of the millions of church pew Christians who expected to be raptured off the earth before that spectacle ever came. And instead of seeking Yahweh as to what is going on, they will head back to the same churches who have deceived them over the ages and expect to find answers. The scary thing is, the beast's prophets are already in place. They're leading our biggest denominations and churches, and they will not give the people the truth of what is going on, but in collusion with Satan will verify that this person who came in the clouds with their UFOs is indeed Jesus the Messiah. Those following religion have always been confident in the false belief that they will not be deceived because they are the elect. Says who? Define elect. Yes, the elect will not be deceived because they are not in the churches listening to or following man. They have sought Yahweh for the truth and they were let out of the paganism and lies in the churches. The Lord pulled me out of them years ago. And you will hear the same thing from hundreds, even thousands of others who have sought the Lord for the truth and he has had them leave the churches as well. Deception is not just going to be rampant then, it's everywhere now. Most people will not even know we are in the tribulation period until it hits them smack on the head. The proponents claim the new prosperity programs will be publicly announced after Nazara is announced. Eventually, all people worldwide will have access to these programs. According to Nazara proponents, there has been enough money in the world for the last 30 years that if the money were evenly distributed, every person would be a millionaire. 5% of the world's people control 95% of the world's wealth, Nazara frees up vast amounts of money for worldwide distribution to all the world's people. The proponents of Nazara claim people in most countries will receive bank-related debt forgiveness for credit card debt, mortgages, car loans, education loans, personal loans, home refinancing mortgages, home equity loans, etc. similar to what people in the U.S. are receiving. It is to ensure the average person's life is improved and their financial and economic assets are safeguarded. They are ensuring liberty and sovereignty while at the same time taking it away and demanding you conform to their economic model. This is not an offer, Nazara is a demand, a global tyranny about to take over and for those who do not conform they will be subjugated and taken over by those who do. In these last days, he will be allowed to play God for 42 months. His assistant, partner, what the Bible calls the second beast, who the church is called a false prophet, will perform miracles and claim that the Antichrist is the one who gave him the power to do it, therefore, proclaiming this Messiah Lucifer the Antichrist is God. If and when Nazara is announced, it will begin the total dissolving of the Illuminati's worldwide behind-the-scenes control and domination efforts. In effect, we trade one global tyrant, the Illuminati, who are working to bring in their own NWO for another, the Omgans, and their Nazara NWO. The Omgans are Lucifer's armies. When the chip or mark is enforced you have to wonder if people will recognize it for what it is. In Revelation chapter 13 it says by deception the world is deceived. The coming economic policy the beast prosperity program. To the Omgans, this law is already on the books, just waiting to be announced. They promote it as an act of peace, yet this has been enforced upon the entire world, regardless of whether they want it or not. It is a global agenda. Nazara is nothing but a money and wealth bribe. And naturally people want to be wealthy, it's enticing. No more bills, a chance to be a millionaire, and they will buy it hook, line, and sinker. If you do not join their program, you cannot buy or sell anything anywhere in the world. You cannot go down to the corner store and buy a loaf of bread unless you join the program and you join this new economic program by getting the global chip that identifies you.
they will promote new global technology that resembles smart card technology where they can put all your information on an implantable chip and without it, you cannot even continue to function in society. It will replace the need for cash, it will do everything the implantable chips you hear about now are doing, only it will be enforced instead of voluntary. The Apostle John warned us of this in Revelation 13:16. The Omgans are the ones behind Nazara. The leaders are ascended master liar Saint Germain. His supporters refer to him as a saint. I say he isn't. That's the spelling. Saint and ascended master liar Sanandamitraya. It does not matter which translation you are reading of the Bible. Just know that this mark can be a barcode, a tattoo, or an implantable chip, and just stay away from anything that is required to be put on or in your right hand or forehead, so you can keep functioning as a buyer and seller in society. This is the beast system that the Apostle warned about. When you see it, and it's already here, and coming even more so, in the future to be enforced, then recognize it for what it is. It's a beast system and it's led by a beast. It is all from Satan, and it will enslave you, and entrap your soul into allegiance to him. He deceived millions of angels into a rebellion against the Most High, in the early ages, and he is going to use the same tactic of deception, in the last days, to deceive millions of people, to once again join him in a rebellion against the Most High. The players the two who really run the agenda for Nazara are Saint Germain and Saint Sananda. And it will not take you long to discover that we have been led down the river of deception since we have been born and conditioned into believing what Jesus looks like when it's not him at all. It's this son on doubt who is coming portraying and mocking him. These pictures we have seen all our lives as Jesus are nothing more than the coming son on doubt. Of course we knew those were really just artist renditions of what Jesus might look like but to realize it was purposeful conditioning. This is going to not only put many into a panic because they are confused and think he might actually be the real Jesus and yet anger most of those who know better. It's going to be complete chaos and confusion. Germain and Sananda display supernatural powers. Remember this is the Omgans talking, not Christians. Notice how biblical the lingo sounds. This was excerpted from their prophecies of the coming ascended masters from www.forwinston.com. Oh, the Father will raise up a mighty army of the faithful to deal a mighty blow to the cruel and greedy men of this world. Oh, he will pour out a mighty gift upon his little ones who will change the world for the betterment of all mankind. Oh, he will encamp a mighty angelic army with swords of fire to protect them. Oh, in those days he will call those children his own gans. Oh, in heaven's perfect timing, oh, our golden age, they refer to the Antichrist as the father with an angelic army who's coming from heaven. They say peace when there is no peace. Their agenda is peace and prosperity. It all sounds good until you realize you are selling your soul to the devil to save a few bucks. It's just exchanging one global agenda for another. Nazara versus Illuminati with Satan playing both sides. Yes, we would all like everything Nazara promises to give, but on our terms, not theirs, and without mocking the depiction and resemblance of our Lord Jesus Christ, Yahushua, with their Germain and Sananda, how many will be deceived by Sananda when they see him for themselves and realize he looks appearance and sounds terminology just like the Jesus of the Bible? Will they know this is a deception? Our real Heavenly Father is not coming in a swarm of UFOs to announce a new worldwide economic program. The Bible reveals quite an opposite picture of the one the Omgans are going to portray. The Second Coming of Christ Revelation 1911-16 In Zechariah 4 5c it says, And the Lord my God shall come, and all the saints with thee. Yeshua is not coming in a UFO. No announcement from a space station will be needed to get the world's attention of his arrival and descent. The world will see this huge procession from the skies as they slowly descend to Earth, taking many hours for the whole world to witness this event. Do not be deceived by the imposter that is coming bearing the name of Jesus. He is not the real Jesus. Jesus is not coming to bring peace and prosperity to the world. He is coming to judge and destroy it. The false messiah coming will declare peace. 
do not believe him. He will cause nothing but war, death, and destruction. In fact, this false messiah will even come against the true believers of the real Jesus Christ. This false messiah is Satan himself incarnate in man. Do not be deceived. Do not believe his lies. He himself wants to be worshipped as God, and he will cause families to go up against one another to betray those who believe in the real Son of God, even to death. Real believers in the real Son of God will be persecuted worldwide and killed for their faith. Even by those proclaiming to be Christians. Matthew 24 4-13 it is this Nazareth that will be the political agenda and political platform of the Antichrist when he arrives on earth. It is probably going to be the first thing he implements as he uses it to bribe a greedy and gullible world into riches and prosperity. What better way to get six billion people to get a chip implanted than dangle the promises of a million dollars over their head and the elimination of debt? And if that does not entice you, you will not have much choice, because, without getting the chip or mark, you cannot put gas in your car, you cannot cash your paycheck, you cannot buy food. You are going to find yourself hostage to either getting this chip and joining the Nazara system, or just dying. The only religious exemption will be at the guillotine. It is better to die upholding your faith in Yahweh, than to serve eternity in hell. Because if you join the Nazara system, the system of Revelation 13, you will automatically give your soul to Lucifer. This Nazara system will never last or work. The judgments from Yahweh alone will throw this world into mayhem and chaos, and all the money in the world will not be able to buy food that does not exist or save you from natural disasters you cannot control. Yahweh is going to destroy this world and no amount of money or riches will save you from it, and Lucifer will deceive the world. It's not an economic program but soul enslavement to Lucifer. Once you receive that chip or mark promoted as technological advancements, he owns your soul. Do not be deceived. Hello, I'm Graham Duye, founder of Inlight Radio and host of the radio program Our Galactic Family. As many of you know already, we are not alone in the universe. I know my galactic family is here in our skies as I speak to you now, as do my colleagues who will be sharing their stories with you shortly. In fact, we are all part of the same galactic family. You, me, our families, friends, neighbors, and colleagues, and those who have been and continue to appear in our skies. Our star brothers and sisters have been with us since the beginning of time, and they've been visiting with us regularly, every day. I know that our galactic family is here, and I know they're here to help us achieve a wonderful future.
saying correct without a doubt not only right. open not only open bill but we have to respect science in its own field how would it change the church's teaching then well, if you consider yeah. for a moment if you determine that there is extraterrestrial life there well uh, one thing would be fascinating would be not only extraterrestrial life but if it were extraterrestrial intelligent life forms that would definitely make us go back and say maybe our understanding of perennial truths needs to be updated now the way we look at it is this it's not about whether or not god was the creator whether how but rather how he created it's not a question of whether original sin this adam and eve story is true or not but our understanding of how that played out so it's in it's growing in our understanding of perennial truth. Uh, I think that's an interesting explanation. 